Greetings to the people of God from St. Matthew's Church in Glendale, California, as we gather virtually for today's worship service, coming to you from the prayer chapel of St. Matthew's Church in Glendale, California. Let us pray. God of the journey, we often choose in our hearts to go our own ways in life without regard for the paths that you would have us travel. We have even believed that you would not care and that there would never be a price to pay. Forgive us and draw us ever closer so that we might again share your wonderful blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we are invited in today's readings to consider what it means to be a steward rather than an owner of all that we have, it is crucial to recall that we have been bought with a price. Christ Jesus gave himself a ransom for all. Apart from the generosity of God, we have nothing. We are nothing. By God's gracious favor, we have everything we need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us come to God in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself to heal us and to bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, heal us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Blessed be Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Jesus breaks down the walls that divide us. Praise Jesus, who is our peace. The peace of Jesus be with you all, and also with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, our Defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve in us the faith of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
a reading from the book of the prophet Amos. The Lord said, You people crush those in need and wipe out the poor. You say to yourselves, How much longer before the end of the new moon festival? When will the Sabbath be over? Our wheat is ready and we want to sell it now. We cannot wait to cheat and charge high prices for the grain that we sell. We will use dishonest scales and mix dust in the grain. Those who are needy and poor do not have any money. We will make them our slaves for the price of a pair of sandals. I, the Lord, will not forget any of this, though you take great pride in your ancestor Jacob. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to Pastor Timothy. Paul writes, First of all, I ask you to pray for everyone. Ask God to help and bless them all, and tell God how thankful you are for each of them. Pray for kings and others in power, so that we may live quiet and peaceful lives as we worship and honor God. This kind of prayer is good, and it pleases God our Savior. God wants everyone to be saved and to know the whole truth, which is, there is one God, and Christ Jesus is the only one who can bring us to God. Jesus was truly human, and he gave himself to rescue us all. God showed us this at the right time. That is why God chose me to be a preacher and an apostle of the good news. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. God sent me to teach the Gentiles about faith and truth.
reading from St. Luke's Gospel, the 16th chapter. Jesus told his disciples, There was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. The manager said to himself, What shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do, so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called in each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, How much do you owe my master? Nine hundred gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it four hundred and fifty. Then he asked the second, And how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, Take your bill and make it eight hundred. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So, if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees, who loved money, heard all this and were sneering at Jesus. He said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of others, but God knows your hearts. What people value highly is detestable in God's sight. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's parable, as we continue our summer sermon series on Jesus' kingdom parables, is a puzzling parable, to say the least. Yet perhaps one of the keys to unwrapping this riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma is the old proverb, you can be very fond of the wrong things. You can be very fond of the wrong things. In relating this parable to us several decades after Jesus had originally spoken it, St. Luke writes and tells us that, the Pharisees, who loved money, heard all this and were sneering at Jesus. These Pharisees, these hypocritical religious leaders of the day, were sneering at Jesus because they understood clearly that Jesus had pointed this parable directly at them. This parable forcefully slammed their distorted values about money. The hypocritical religious leaders sneered because they were continually trying to look good before other human beings, apparently forgetting that God sees the heart. They were very fond of the wrong things. They loved money so much that they were in danger of making money their God. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. 
It was that line in particular that drew the sneer of the hypocritical religious leaders. Therefore, it is that line in particular that we need to take a look at as we attempt to understand this puzzling parable. The primary point that Jesus is making here is that money can become a distraction in life. Money can become a distraction in life which can cause us to lose the real meaning of life. The real meaning of life which is found only in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, to be clear, it is not money per se which is the problem. However, an inordinate focus on money, well, that can be our undoing. What people value highly is detestable in God's sight. Elsewhere, the Bible puts it this way, the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money, but the love of money is the root of the problem of the hypocritical religious leaders in our parable today. What's more, the love of money is the root of the problem for many people in our world today. In our corrupt state. We human beings value all the wrong things. Possessions, land, cars, cash. But God values the things of God's kingdom. Faith in Jesus. Acts of grace toward others. Forgiveness for those who hurt us. And love for all. Our money is not meant to give us power over others. Rather, our money is meant to allow us to help others. In the church, we call this being good stewards. Good stewards love Jesus. Good stewards love Jesus' church. Good stewards also love everyone and want everyone to hear the good news that Jesus suffered and died to forgive them of all of their brokenness and wrongdoing. The good news that Jesus rose again to promise them eternal life. Good stewards serve God by serving God's people with what is in all reality God's money. Back to our reading, Jesus says, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. In this and in various other parables, Jesus is trying to afflict the comfortable. Jesus is trying to afflict the comfortable by forcing his hearers to re-examine their personal value systems. Jesus means for this parable to serve as a wake-up call to people who are missing out on what life is really supposed to be all about. Now, remember what we discussed earlier in this sermon series of Jesus' kingdom parables. These parables are not meant as moral example stories. In fact, the hero of this parable is actually a guy who's trying to save his own neck by conspiring against his master with his master's debtors. The hero of this parable, the shrewd steward, is the guy who's cooking the books. Jesus tells this parable of the shrewd steward not because the shrewd steward is a moral example. Rather, Jesus, with this parable, is comparing the true values of the kingdom of God to the false values of the kingdoms of men. To do that, 
Jesus hammers away at the hypocritical religious leader's love of money. Human beings are only stewards, Jesus reminds them. Human beings are never truly owners. If we think of ourselves as owners, well, then our possessions will possess us. You cannot serve both God and money. Jesus continues. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. What Jesus is doing here in this admittedly rather odd manner is commending the use of money to help other people. Use money to help people instead of using money to gain pride or power or possession or more positions and things. All the supposed value of our money is going to come to an end when we die. And not one red cent of all of our money will do us any good when we face the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. Theologian Helmut Thielecki puts it this way, It is made perfectly clear to us that one day every one of us will be left destitute. The day will come when we will stand naked before God. We shall be stripped of all things in which we put our confidence down here below. We shall stand before the throne of God without title, without money, without home, without reputation, we shall stand before the throne of God in utter poverty. That is Jesus' point in this powerful but puzzling parable. One day, you and I, stewards, will each stand before the judgment seat of God. And God, Unlike corrupt earthly rulers, God cannot be fooled and God cannot be bought. God knows our actions and God also knows our motives because God knows our hearts. God knows our checkbook registers and our MasterCard statements in complete detail. God knows whether we have used our money to help others or to try to exercise power over others. The Bible tells us a number of things about the last judgment. First, the Bible makes very clear that God loves us. Thus, through Jesus, God desires to save us, not to condemn us. St. Paul says it clearly. God wants everyone to be saved and to know the whole truth, which is, there is only one God, and Christ Jesus is the only one who can bring us to God. Jesus loves us so much that Jesus chose to die on the cross to earn salvation for each one of us. Nonetheless, the Bible also tells us that you cannot serve both God and money. We can never let our money rise to the point of becoming our true God. Rather, God gives we stewards money to use as a tool to help others. We followers of Jesus are called to be good stewards of money and of all the gifts that come to us from God. What's more, we followers of Jesus are called to be grateful for the salvation that has already been won for us by Jesus' cross. And then we are also told to use our money to share that salvation with others. 
people of God, in the final analysis, that is the only thing that truly matters. Because everything else, everything else, will someday simply pass away. Amen. Filled by the Holy Spirit, let us join the people of God in Christ Jesus in praying for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of all, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. We pray for missionaries across the globe, especially the Federwitz family and Lutheran Bible translators. Keep them safe and bless the work that they do in your name. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. You have given us vast seas, great lands, and abundant natural resources to feed a hungry planet. Give us also grateful hearts and willing hands to care for these good gifts. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Be present with those across this earth who are hiding from their enemies and who are afraid that they might truly be alone. Wrap them securely in the mantle of your loving presence. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Calm the storms that sweep across families dealing with the death of a loved one and the grief of those who mourn. Fill their aching hearts with your peace and hope for the future. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Faithful one, we thank you for all the saints who have gone before us, especially Matthew and Martin, 
We take heart in your saving grace, which reaches out to us across all eternity. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Into your hands, loving God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us confess together our faith in the words of the Church's Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Always be glad because of the Lord. I will say it again, be glad. Always be gentle with others. The Lord will soon be here. Do not worry about anything, but pray about everything. With thankful hearts, offer up your prayers and requests to God. Then, because you belong to Christ Jesus, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. And this peace will control the way you think and the way you feel. Keep your minds on whatever is true, pure, right, holy, friendly, and proper. Do not ever stop thinking about what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. And God, who gives peace, will be with you. God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
the holy, undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you at last to that heavenly city where God lives forever and ever. Amen.